chartered accountant Pa Akintola Williams dies at 104. Hello and welcome to the Network News on NTA. I'm Nadja Atutujani. Joining me from Lagos is Hindino John Adams. The Network News is always live on our website, nta.ng slash live. And do follow us across all social media handles displayed on the screen for updates. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his United Arab Emirates counterpart Mohammed bin Zayed and Nahyan on Monday in Abu Dhabi finalized a historic agreement leading to the immediate cessation of the visa ban placed on Nigerian travelers. By this historic agreement, both Etihad Airlines and Emirates Airlines are to immediately resume flight schedules into and out of Nigeria without any further delay. This immediate restoration of flight activity through the two airlines and countries does not involve any immediate payment by the Nigerian government as negotiated between both presidents. An agreed framework has also been established which will involve billions of US dollars worth of new investments into the Nigerian economy across multiple sectors including defense by the investment arms of the government of the United Arab Emirates. President Tinubu has also successfully negotiated a joint new foreign exchange liquidity program between both governments, details of which will be made known soon. President Tinubu commends President Mohammed bin Zayed and Nahyan of the United Arab Emirates for his unalloyed friendship and determined effort to join hands to fully normalize and reset the excellent relations between both countries. Vice President Kashim Shatima has flagged off the distribution of palliatives and 140 vehicles for security and mass transit as part of ongoing measures by the federal government to cushion the effects of subsidy removal. Zainab Saidu Abdel Nasser reports that the Vice President has also inaugurated an overhead bridge at Rijer Urua roundabout in Sakwato State. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who described the efforts of Governor Ahmed Ali in providing the palliatives and security vehicles to, as people oriented, said peace and development are intertwined and his support to security operatives in the state will boost their morale to perform their duties optimally. The government is coming up with very robust programs to ameliorate the sufferings of the Nigerian people. Governor Ahmed Ali said, apart from the security vehicles provided by his administration, Bua Cement has donated 10 others. For the state government would not accept any luxury on the fact of management of Sokoto State Transport Authority. Inaugurating the rigid row of a head bridge, Vice President Kashim Shatima said Nigeria is in huge infrastructural deficit and government is about continuity. Governor Ahmed Ali, you said he decided to complete the project considering its importance to the socio-economic development of the people. At Sedina, in his honor, the vice president said federal government will work with stakeholders to change the human indices of Sokoto State, as the state has one of the worst indices in terms of education. Out of school children has a record of 55.1% children under 5 with stunted growth, as well as 80% children and 74% women suffering from anemia. The vice president said federal government is also working to tackle banditry in the northwestern region. In Sokoto, Zainab Said Abdel Nasser, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government is working hard to ensure that all roads in the country are motorable and road projects completed according to specified standards. The Minister of Works, David Umahi, said this when he inspected federal highway projects in Anambra State and the second Niger Bridge. Joy Liupu reports. It is to get a clear picture of federal road infrastructure in the state, challenges and targets to be met. Accompanied by top officials of the ministry, the minister made his first stop on the Enugu Onicha Expressway, a critical highway that connects the southeast to other parts of the country. I'm giving you 48 hours to go and look all those areas that are not available to be motorable. Other roads projects inspected include the Oye Oranto Road, Otwocha Ibaji Road Project, Oba Oga Akokwa Road, and the Obarogeni, where gully erosion has cut off the road. 
At the second Niger bridge, the minister appeared satisfied with work done by the contractor but called for private partnership to develop the area. Uh, I'm also reviewing a number of uh, projects to see which way we can also cut money from and then be able to assist uh, other projects. Earlier, the minister paid a visit to the Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo, where he revealed plans to redesign some of the road projects. I'm so excited about the point you made that even within the first few days of getting into that, you're already coming up with new ways of delivering this and maintaining it. The two-day inspection is part of the minister's concluding visit of Federal Highways Infrastructure in the Southeast region. In Oka, Joy Iluebu, NTA News. Contract variation will no longer be tenable in the execution of projects, says the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyeso Mwiki, who made this known at the launch site of the resurfacing of existing roads and remedial works on bridges in the city centre in Abuja. Onuzi Yakubu reports. 135 routes in the FCT are set to wear a new look in the next five to six months. This follows the flag off of the resurfacing of existing routes and remedial works on bridges within the city center. FCT Minister Yense Wiki hinted that President Tinubu's renewed hope agenda must be seen replicated in the FCT, hence the need to change the narrative in project execution. And what I've come today is to assure you the agenda, Mr. President, of renewed hope is not just by talking, but also putting it into practice. Now to the contractors, let me warn you now. All these bills, what are they doing with the engineering services? You don't go work again. I hear what they're talking now. Nothing like variation, it will not work. I'm sure with Mr. Project Abucha is going to be something else. I pray with Almighty Allah that we get all the support we need from the people of FCT for us to achieve. Stakeholders at the event affirmed the commitment of the FCT minister in transforming the nation's capital city in line with the dreams of its founding fathers. Honorable Minister, I assure you, as Chairman House Committee on FCT, that we are going to give you support. The city developers say the phase one of the rehabilitation works will cover two kilometer routes within the federal capital city. Onoze Akubu, NT News. On the security front, the Nigerian Army and Customs Service are joining forces in the fight against smugglers and illicit drugs. The Acting Comptroller General, Nigeria Customs Service, Bashir Adiwale Adini, highlighted this while on a working visit to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja. I believe that because of the rich experience that the Army has in this uh, fair pass, it will be easier for you to bring up the capacity of our officers that are serving in these border areas. And uh, the Department of Army Operation is very much available to interface with the Nigerian Customs Service such that we bring the Nigerian Customs on board in the conduct of uh, these exercises. Similarly, the Director General, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Professor Ayo Omotayo, was at the Nigerian Army headquarters to further forge a common front in the ongoing drive to secure the country. Expecting to plead with the government to give the Army the necessary funding, the necessary support it needs to be able to carry out its objectives. Naua does not have a functional guest house to accommodate members of the association traveling to Abuja for official activities. I hereby appeal to the Chief of Army Staff to come to the aid of Naua in completing the abandoned Naua guest house. The President of Nigerian Army Officers' Wives Association, Maria Labaja, led a delegation to the Nigerian headquarters, Army headquarters, appealing for the remodeling of the Naoa Sectariat and Guesthouse. 
The Northeast governors have resolved to decisively deal with any traditional ruler or community leader found to be harboring or conniving with criminal elements in their domains. This forms part of a 10-point communique issued at the end of the 8th Northeast Governors Forum meeting held in Meduguri and declared open by Vice President Kashim Shatima. Mohamed Goni reports. The 8th meeting of the Northeast Governors Forum had in attendance governors of Adamawa, Borno, Bochi, and Yobe states, with the governors of Gombe and Taraba represented by their deputies. The forum expressed delight at the growing strength of cooperation, collaboration, and cordial relationship between the governors of the six states of the region. The 10 point communique issued by the forum after exhaustive deliberations, as read by the Adamawa state governor, Ahamaru Umaru Pintiri, among other things, appreciated Vice President Kashim Shetima for gracing the opening ceremony of the 8th meeting of the Northeast Governors Forum and the government and people of Borno for hosting the event. While acknowledging the relative success recorded against the insurgency, a new dimension of growing banditry is added to worsen the security situation in the sub-region. As a result of the concerted efforts of the military to flush bandits from other parts of the country, the bandits are now moving towards the northeast. The forum calls on the federal government to urgently intervene to address this issue. The forum noted with dismay that some traditional rulers and other local authorities are conniving with the bandits, giving them shelter and cover to commit crimes within the sub region and resolved to deal with them. The forum noted with great concern the climatic change and environmental degradation is a major issue affecting the sub region. The issue of flooding that had affected the states leading to destruction of properties and loss of livelihoods. The forum agreed that all the states within the sub-region are to domesticate the Education Law 2022 as recommended by the Northeast Education Council, it earlier constituted in Meiduguri, Mahmoud Gwani, NT News. It's time for felicitations and President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has congratulated the Etsu Nupi, His Royal Highness Yahya Abubakar, on the occasion of his 71st birthday and 20th coronation anniversary. In a congratulatory message, President Tinubu describes the first-class monarch, who is also the chairman of the Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers, as a consummate statesman and a most respected national leader, noting that throughout his decorated career as a military officer and upon his ascension to the revered throne of his forefathers two decades ago. The traditional ruler has remained steadfast in his service to Nigeria and his people. President Tinubu prays for more fulfilling years for the traditional ruler and urges him to rededicate himself to improving society. Similarly, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris Malagi, congratulates the Etsu Nupe Al Haji Yahya Abubakar on the occasion of his 71st birthday, coinciding with the 20th year of his ascension to the throne. A statement signed by the minister, who is also the Kakaki Nupe, describes the Etsu Nupe as a worthy leader who has displayed exceptional wisdom to his people, to which both the Niger state and federal governments have benefited from over the past two decades. While thanking Almighty Allah for his life and service to the nation, Muhammad Malagi wishes the Etsunupe more wisdom and good health to continue leading his people. President Bola Tinubu also felicitates with the SMA of Benin Chief Gabriel Ibinidion on his 89th birthday, congratulating the renowned industrialist and philanthropist on behalf of Nigerians. President Tinubu extols the willingness of the celebrant to create opportunities for the growth of others in business. In a statement, the president recounts his long-standing relationship with Chief Igbenedion as friends, partners and business leaders, both within and outside the country, expressing his contributions towards economic growth and his continued impact on the lives of many. The president prays for enduring grace, peace and good health for the patriarch of the patriarch of the Ibnidion family now and in the years ahead. We'll be joining the special advisor to the President Ajiri in Gelali live via Zoom on the landmark deal with the United States. <laughs> 
Thanks for staying tuned. Earlier on in the bulletin, we brought a report of President Tinubu's landmark deal with the government of the United Arab Emirates. And joining me via Zoom to discuss some of the issues raised in the landmark deal is the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity at Jureen Galali. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good evening to you and good evening to all Nigerians. So let's quickly dive into what the benefits of this landmark deal would be for Nigeria. Yes, uh, so uh, let me start by saying that uh, there is a process that is currently underway uh, here in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, uh, in which uh, multiple uh, members of cabinet, including the Honorable Ministers of Aviation, Finance, uh, as well as uh, trade and investment uh, are here together with the National Security Advisor, the Chief of Staff to the President and others, uh, working with their counterparts uh, from the UAE uh, to essentially finalize uh, the agreement which was uh, described uh, to some detail uh, in the presidential statement earlier today signed by me. Um, and what it involves, uh, aside from uh, the restoration of uh, normalcy uh, in the bilateral relationship between the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates it is also a kind of a, a, a reset on, uh, you know, what had been a major bottleneck in the bilateral relationship, uh, which is the, uh, the ban that was placed on visa processing for Nigerian travelers. Uh, that has been dealt with now. Uh, Nigerians will be able to freely travel uh, uh, to and from uh, the UAE uh, for the first time in a very long time. Uh, and uh, that is going to have major impact uh, in terms of uh, our, our, the, p the ability of our people to do business, uh, to uh, you know, be able to transact, to take holidays and the like. So it, it, is, it is quite profound, uh, even at the level uh, of uh, just uh, you know, basic citizenship. But on top of that, uh, for the president to now be able to uh, add to that uh, what will be new dimensions to the bilateral relationship uh, in view of his uh, economic development diplomacy, uh, you know, the diplomatic drive he's put in place to aggressively attract investment from around the world, uh, Nigerians are seeing the fruits of that now, starting from India, where he was able to secure $14 billion in new investment pledges, and now, of course, uh, in the UAE. But until we uh, have uh, signatures on the dotted line, so to speak, and this uh, process is fully concluded, uh, I think uh, it's best that uh, we leave it in the realm of uh, where we left it uh, in the presidential statement. And now that you've brought up the issue of diplomacy, what is your general assessment of President Tinubu's one-on-one -on -one meeting with some of the world leaders? Well, uh, I think a starting point is to say that uh, what I saw firsthand was uh, foreign leaders uh, recognizing the authenticity of the man they're sitting across uh, from. I think there's a general recognition from world leaders who have interacted directly with His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu that this is a man you can do business with. Uh, this is a man who will tell you only what he intends to do and not anything other than that. Uh, this is a man who is known uh, for fulfilling his pledges and his word to people, uh, both in terms of politics and in terms of government. Uh, this is someone who uh, will look you in the eye, he will tell you what he is comfortable with, he will also tell you what he is comfortable with. He will tell you what his vision is, he will tell you uh, why it's in your interest to cooperate with him, uh, and he will persuade you. Uh, and if he, if you, uh, if you buy uh, his argument, uh, then you're a partner. If you don't, then you're still a friend. And that's the approach he takes. He's a very charming individual, but he's somebody who is very uh, substantial in his knowledge of the issues. And people uh, respect people who um, come to the table uh, with a full grasp and understanding of all the issues confronting multiple sectors of the economy at the same time. And we're starting to see the benefits of that. Uh, and the last thing I would say is that we have seen uh, several invitations on, uh, from world leaders, including from U.S. President Joe Biden. We received an exclusive invitation, uh, exclusive in the sense that he, uh, President Tinubu is the only African leader who received that invitation. 
uh, to meet uh, with uh, U.S. President Biden uh, on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly uh, in a few days. Uh, aside from that, uh, the German Chancellor uh, had uh, asked uh, President Tinubu uh, to come to Abuja, uh, we believe by next month, uh, to further uh, the engagements that we had had uh, that uh, the, the administration of President Tinubu has had uh, with the German authorities uh, along the line of uh, new investments and other opportunities in the bilateral relationship to explore. So really across the board, we have seen the fruits of these engagements rather than, you know, the kinds of um, uh, sit downs uh, perhaps in our history that have not yielded uh, tangible results. Indeed, and Nigerians do look forward to reaping more of the benefits of some of President Moore of President Tinubu's diplomatic and development stride. Now, I've been speaking with the special advisor on media to President Tinubu, Ajuri Ngelali. Governor Amadou Umaru Fintiri has commiserated with the families of both survivors and those who lost their lives in the recent boat mishap in Juwa River, Yola South local government area. Bilkisu Abubakar reports. Ten people are said to have died and ten others rescued as a result of boat mishap in Juwa River in Yola South local government area of Adamawa State. The incidents occurred when the boat conveying about 23 traders and farmers capsized on their way for their respective business. Governor Amadou Maru Fintri, who was represented by his deputy, Kaleta Bua George Farauta, on a sympathy visit to the families of the victims, called for caution at all times. Whatever affects one affects all, and that is why we're here today. And we have spoken to them, to, for them because they live on the river bank, to apply some basic safety measures so that when crossing the river to the other side, the boats should not be overloaded. The governor directed the Adamawa State Emergency Management Agency to immediately make provision of life jackets for water transportation to ensure safety of passengers. In Yola, Bilkisu Abubakar, NTA News. Still on another tragic incident, the Minister of Education is tackling his responsibility head-on and has directed the Vice-Chancellor of the Federal University of Oye Ekiti to uncover the perpetrators of the murder of a nursing student in the institution, Misatonda. Mudupe. The minister handed down the directive at the 2021-2022 Nigerian Annual Education Conference in Abuja. Abdullahi Musa Suleja was there for NTA News. The Annual Education Conference was conceived by the ministry in collaboration with its development partners and other stakeholders to constantly renew the country's effort to ensure improved access to high-quality education with an effective delivery system. Many may ask, why 2023 and 2022, when 2023 is coming to an end? The year 2022 through 2021 were constrained by the COVID-19 pandemic, battling with recovery and returning the school calendar to the normal. The conference, however, is coming with the renewed hope of the government. And so, the renewed hope is assured in this conference. We want to bridge that gap between the policy statements and the actualization. Elsewhere within the ministry, stakeholders in the education sector have been reminded of a responsibility of taking protection of schools and educational facilities in the country as a shared responsibility and a collective commitment to safeguard the future of Nigeria. This is at an event to commemorate the 2023 International Day to protect education from attack. School attack bring fear to every child, resulting in increased school dropout, diminished enrollment, and compromised educational quality. United Nations member states in September every year highlight the issue of safeguarding education against acts of violence and disruption. Abdullahi Musa Suleja, NTA News. 
and still on protecting education from attacks, reducing out-of-school children by the year 2027 is a deliberate effort by the, by the Governor Babagana Umarazulum administration, using a wide range of policies to restore the lost glory of the education sector in Borno State, in addition to constructing mega schools in the first 100 days in office. In this special report, Mohamed Goni examines the educational revival journey in light of the administration's second term in office. Post insurgency recovery efforts, successful administration in Borno State built many mega-sized primary and secondary schools to take orphans and other vulnerable out-of-school children off the street. In addition to about 30 mega schools built in the first term of his administration, Governor Wagana Omar Azulim in just 100 days in office of his second term built and equipped three 30 classroom story building mega schools at Alakaramti, Shuari 2 and Gamburu communities of Maiduguri Metropolitan Council and Jerry local government areas. The fully furnished mega schools equipped with modern instructional materials, free uniforms and books for the pupils as well as laboratories and sporting facilities among others were inaugurated by the Vice President Kashim Shetima during his two-day official engagement in Borno State. The present administration also approved employment of 4,000 teachers across the state to provide the needed manpower for the increasing number of modern schools. We're building up classrooms, provided more furniture. But the most important ingredient in education is the quality of the teachers. Borno State government, in the period under review, also undertook complete fencing of government secondary school Sakwa in our local government area. Construction of 20 units of two-bedroom teachers' quarters in Gubio, Briel, and Dikwa towns. Education is a key sector. It's the fundamental of human capital development. Every de developed society has a good literacy index. Governor Zilim administration also built two blocks of four classrooms at Gajiram, three blocks of six classrooms at Lafayfel, two blocks of four classrooms each at Kubo, Wutri and Tungushe, as well as equipping up 22 science laboratories across 22 secondary schools. Yes. In Maiduguri, Bamut Goni, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Tinubu's presidency has been described as a work in progress which would do better given the enabling environment and desired support to beam the light of national unity and prosperity, says the Confederation of Governing All Progressives Congress support groups, which made the observation at a post-presidential election petition court briefing. Haruna Mohammed has the details. The Federal Judiciary had proved itself to be the guardians for justice and fairness against the sirens of deception. The Confederation of APC Support Groups is for the first time reacting to the outcome of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. The Director General adjusts the judgment as reaffirmation of the will of the masses, calling on the opposition to accept it in good faith and join hands with the renewed hope agenda of taking Nigeria to greater heights. Nigeria has set a record. It was taken one by one. All the petitions one by one. It took about over 13 hours. I think we have to give kudos to those five justices. While assessing steps taken in the aftermath of subsidy removal, Kalani Mohammed urged Nigerians to be hopeful. He says their groups are aware of the ongoing rehabilitation work at the refineries and they will soon bounce back to life. We want local government monies to be released directly to the local government because they are closer to the people so that they will bring in civilian JTFs, equipment, train them so that they can work in collaboration with our security agencies to bring peace and tranquility in our nation. He urged state governors to ensure judicious implementation of the eight-point agenda of APC in bringing peace and prosperity to Nigeria and for Nigerians. Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Hingino is in our Lagos studios with more reports. Over to you, Hingino. Technology company Flutterwave has launched BDC Swap app, which serves as a secure and reliable digital platform for Nigerians. It gives immediate access to foreign currency at competitive the founder and chief executive officer, Flutter Wave, 
to be into the Nigeria digital payment market at a media briefing in Lagos. At a time when Nigerians and businesses are experiencing limited access to foreign currencies, thereby posing challenges for those seeking to engage in international transactions and other cross-border financial activities, Flutterwave has developed a software solution called Swap App. Swap App, a cutting-edge technology, will promote access to global opportunities by addressing challenges that have hampered macroeconomic growth and personal financial goals. As a fintech with a bank partner in like Aruba BDC, that is the biggest enabler you can see ever. And the opportunity here is we can actually build something for the average guy on the street, you know, using all our amazing technology and platforms to provide a solution for Nigeria today. Beyond being a digital platform to facilitate currency exchange for businesses and consumers, the acting governor of Central Bank of Nigeria and Flutterwave partners agreed that SWAP will ensure that every exchange is not only seamless and secure, but financially rewarding. We believe it will help moderate the rates for the BDCs, but at the same time it will differentiate what a BDC is from what the black market transactions are. I'm very um, confident that um, this would um, stimulate the economy, um, directly or indirectly. Um, I'm happy to be on board. What WEMA does is, right now, the way we see ourselves is, we are the backbone to the industry, so to a lot of the big fintechs, and in terms of settlement, and a lot of ideas they have. We have an idea factory in WEMA also. Flutterwave says, one-click access to swap is available to existing users of Flutterwave for business and send up. It will also be available via API for banks and Nigerians who sign up newly on the platform. Nigerians have continued to extol the virtues of the late Pa Kintola Williams who died in the early hours of Monday. Day, 11th September 2023 at the age of 104. He was the doyen of the accounting profession in Nigeria and contributed immensely to accounting, auditing and banking professions in Africa. Amaka O visited the residence of the deceased and now reports. The time of visit to the residence of late Park Kintola Williams, a few early colors were seen including the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat. So we can count those that are across 100 on our fingertips. So God has been kind. He lived a good life. And uh, his efforts or his mark is all over the place. Park Intola Williams has indeed left indelible footprints in the sense of time and will be greatly missed. Best gentleman I've seen in the world, not in, only in Africa. He happens to be known for integrity. As a chartered accountant, he maintained that word integrity to his death. I was uh, a partner, a business partner of his for 21 years, so you can imagine. It's the, it was through his connection that most of these uh, call companies um, uh, contributed to building of a Poisson Center. Accountability, integrity, um, corporate governance, a family man, and he wanted the best for everyone, as long as you got it in the right way. Late Pa Akintola Williams was a distinguished Nigerian and a man of many firsts. He was the first chartered accountant in sub-Saharan Africa, founding member of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the first president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICON, a serial entrepreneur, boardroom guru, and many more. Pa Akintola Williams is survived by children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and a host of relations. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. 
You're still watching NTA Network News. Let's now talk business. The federal government has secured $163 million loan from the African Development Bank to bolster wheat production in Nigeria. Vice President Kashim Shatima made this announcement during his visit to Arugungu in Kebi State. Shatima said the launch of wheat production scheme scheduled for 10 to November is targeted at upscaling the production of the crop in Jigawa and Kebi, where 50,000, 10,000 hectares of land will be cultivated in the states. He highlighted the significance of agriculture and food security as key areas of focus for the federal government. The total revenue generated from postal activities in 2022 fell by 17.05% from 3.63 billion naira in 2021 to 3.01 billion naira in 2022. Data released by the National Bureau of Statistics indicates that the total number of post offices and postal agencies decreased by 19.43% from 2,794 in 2021 to 2,000. 251 in 2022. The total number of boxes in store in 2022 was 836,731, showing a decrease of 0.08% from 8,307 point four two eight in 2021. And now to the capital market, the equities market began first weekday of trading on the Nigerian stock exchange. Bearish has investors lose 463.66 billion naira. The all share index shed 1.24% to close at 67,296.18 basis point. A total of 520 million securities valued at 8.3 billion naira were traded in 9,914 deals. Equity capitalization fell to 36.8 trillion naira. UBA access holding PLC and Transcope were the most traded stocks at the end of this session. Now more reports after these messages do stay. Things in life, making great music is a process. And a key part of that is the right data and the data that helps you understand what needs to be done and how to do it and what sound will connect with listeners. No, bring it up, bring it up. Thanks for staying tuned. Nigeria's recognition amongst the Committee of Nations has been described as a product of sustainable commitment and the sacrifice of leaders committed to nation building, says General Alwali Kazir at an annual lecture organized in honor of General Yakubu Kowon by the Amadou Bello University chapter of Bariwa Old Boys Association. Suraj Abdullahi reports. An analysis of the societal scale in Nigeria revolves around its sociocultural, political and socio-economic evolution via nations building process. This is a salient point of the annual lecture organized by Bariwa Old Boys Association, Amadou Bello University Zaria chapter in honor of General Yakubu Gawan, with the theme Nation Building, the position in Nigeria for greatness in the light of its past struggle. Guest speaker, General Alwani Kazir retired enumerate efforts of various administrations, some of whom were highly risked to keep the country united, improve the living condition of Nigerians, and place the country high on the global scale of recognition. The challenge of history, the challenge of socio-economic inequalities, the constitutional terrain, the challenge of building institutions for democracy and development, and the leadership terrain. Some of the speakers whom are all but you are old boys. We assured Nigerians of better days ahead. We that we are coming up, we are going to do our best to make sure that we have add more value to what is happening today. Definitely, there is hope for Nigeria's future. The annual lecture was described as a hit success by the organizers. From Zaria, Suraj Abdullahi, NTA News. Sports update is next. After a resounding Sydney victory by the Spray Goose of Nigeria against their Sao Tome and Principe counterparts in the final lap of the 2023 African Cup of Nations qualifiers, coach Jose Posero says 
quality players with commitment to the national team will always be accommodated as Nigeria prepares for the World Cup qualifiers and the African Cup of Nations in Côte d'Ivoire. When you see, when you check, you have quality of capacity for play for us, you call them and check. Check in the training and check in the match. If they play, they deserve it. To be honest, uh, we did a good game and it's actually something that can actually give us uh, more confidence for the next one and the next one is the next game for the World Cup qualifier. Lagos club sites in the Nigerian National and Nationwide Leagues are poised for a successful new season. Gift George reports that they are taking part in a preseason football tournament scheduled to commence on the 18th of September at the Mobilaji Johnson Arena in Lagos. And it's also going to help the coaches, it's going to help the, let me say, the technical department and it's also going to help the players as well to be able to assess themselves, the strengths and weaknesses. Now to tennis. After winning a record 24 Grand Slam titles at the US Open, Novak Djokovic has vowed to continue playing at the highest level. The 36-year-old capped another dominant year during which he won the Australian and the French Opens and was runners-up to Carlos Acaraz at Wimbledon by becoming the oldest champion at Flushing Meadows in the Open era. This comes as he pays tribute to NBA legend Kobe Bryant. With Sports Update, I'm Austin Edemodu, NTA News. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, has expressed sorrow over the death of Nigeria's doyen of accounting, Chief Akintola Williams. In a condolence message through his special advisor on media and publicity, Musa Krishi, Speaker Abbas describes the late Akintola as Nigeria's global star in the accounting profession who shone bright across Africa and the world. The speaker prays for the repose of the soul of late Chief Akintola Williams and prays that God will comfort the entire family and friends of the late sage. On that note, we conclude the network news on NTA. Thanks for watching.